This video is brought to you by Knowledge at the Australian School of Business. For more information, please visit knowledge.asb.unsw.edu.au. I'm here with Paul Patterson, the Head of Marketing at the Australian School of Business, to look at plans by the American retailing giant Costco to open many more stores in Australia over the next three years. Now, Paul, Costco is a brand that really isn't known in Sydney at all. How much of a struggle is it going to be for Costco to market themselves? Yes, that's a good question. I mean, Costco is a very large uh, uh, American retailer uh, with, I think, about 550 stores worldwide. Um, it's interesting, Costco has a, what I'd call a very different value proposition to Woolworths or Coles or even, in fact, Aldi. Um, and it's probably going to rely very heavily on word of mouth but it's, it's, it's interesting, its value proposition revolves around a membership. For example, I understand they have between 75,000 and 100,000 members in Melbourne at present. And so word of mouth and rather than above the line advertising will be the way that they, um, they promote the brand. Um, it'll be certainly be interesting to see um, the reaction of Woolworths and Coles. But I mean, Costco, uh, as I say, is a very different value proposition in as much as uh, it's a big barn, a bit like Bunnings, Bunnings Warehouse, Bunnings, um, and, and so you go into Costco and you buy, tend to buy in bulk, large package sizes, uh, straight off the pallet, which would certainly give the impression that, uh, even in the absence of reference prices, that consumers will be getting a, a better price deal and perhaps better value for money than, let's say, the full service stores of Woolworths and Coles. So is it really then, uh, when, when these stores are retailing, uh, they're good, it's about perception of price and how much value then, then the customers actually think they're getting out of it rather than the real value that they get? Oh, I, think it's, I think it's a bit of each. I think there'll be a perception that there are lower prices and I'm sure, in fact, there will be lower prices because what Costco are doing, uh, it's a very, also a very different business model. They're cutting a lot of the overhead costs out of the business, right? They're reducing their above line advertising expenditure, uh, minimum service levels in stores, you know, you go and pretty much package your own stuff, like you do in Aldi, for example, you, you put your own stuff in the plastic bags. So they save on labour costs. They save on the costs, the depreciation of a very expensive, fancy store. Um, so uh, they will have lower fixed costs. And those lower fixed costs, I would expect fully to be passed on in lower prices. But the very nature of the way they've set up the barn, right, buy off the, buy in bulk, buy off the, take it off the pallet, um, I think would also give the perception that the prices are lower. Um, and another aspect of, I guess, consumer behaviour will be if you're paying a membership fee of $50 a year, I think human nature would dictate that you want to recoup that $50. And so that's an interesting twist that, so therefore, I guess I'm more likely or consumers are going to be more likely to go back there to do repeat business because you've invested $50 up front in a membership. So it's going to be, an in it's going to be interesting to see uh, how Woolworths and Coles react because it is a very different, uh, very different business model and it's a very different customer value proposition. Okay, so what are Woolworths and Coles likely to do to stop people from being locked in into this membership fee, if you like, to try and get customers just continually shopping with them as they've done for many years? Yeah, interesting, interesting question, Julian. Um, certainly Woolworths and Coles will not stand by and let their dominance of particularly the supermarket business be eroded. Um, it may prompt Woolworths and Coles to further look at their own prices but one of the things I would expect Woolworths and Coles to do to, to at least to keep their existing customer base and not lose them would be to, I think, fast track their plans for things like news agents, pharmacies within the store, liquor within the store to give the impression of a one-stop shop under the one roof. So the customer goes into Woolworths not only can you get your supermarket shopping, you can get your liquor, you get your pharmacy, you get your newspaper, um, et cetera, et cetera, to give the customers an even more compelling reason to go to Woolworths and Coles. I would expect them to expand their, their joint badging of credit cards, um, uh, collaboration with service stations, for example. Um, again, as a means of, of trying to keep those customers loyal to Woolworths or Coles, respectively. And certainly we noticed that when they were marketing their new store in Melbourne, there it was a real surprise to customers to go in and see, well, Aldi already have it of just having the forklift truck put in the pallet down there in the store. But in Costco, you just have a huge, great big warehouse of the stuff. How do you actually market to people the fact that they are going along to, in effect, a big shed, a big tin shed, rather than what they would see as a nice out of town store? Well, you've only got to look at Bunnings, uh, West Farmers Bunnings which has pretty much put all the independent hardware stores out of business. Certainly, certainly in Sydney it has. Um, it's the, you know, the, the independents have closed down. You go into Bunnings and it's a big warehouse. 
Um, again, they'll claim there's good service, but it's minimal service, and it's 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 actually fitted out like a barn. Um, but again, I think it'll give the it'll give the perception that the prices are lower. The prices will be lower, but it will also give that perception. And I think there's a there's a big demographic out there that uh, a big demographic slice of the Australian population that wants to reduce savings in their supermarket spend. And I think this will particularly appeal to people with big families who want, who would like to buy in bulk. Um, and the let's say the lower uh, you know the lower um, financial groups. So it doesn't surprise me in Sydney, for example, if you asked me in advance and I didn't know, I would say I would locate, locate the store in the southwest, the west of Sydney. Um, and in fact, they're, they're locating the first store in Auburn, uh, which doesn't surprise me at all because I suspect there's a demographic there that is really looking for value for money in their supermarket, or actually not value money as much as price. Right, a reduced price. So it doesn't surprise me that that's where they located. Well, certainly, Paul, we'll have to wait and see and uh, see yeah. what happens when they open the new store. It'll certainly be interesting, Julian. Thank you very much, Paul. For more business news and analysis from Knowledge at the Australian School of Business, please visit knowledge.asb.unsw.edu.au.